Okay, never mind that then. Jordan, why don't you tell the lovely people how they can support this sausage fest? <laughs> Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. This show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Steam EMU is open sourced, but what does that really mean? And Unity puts a ring on their Linux editor. A promise ring, mind you, not a marriage one. Zork Sauce makes it out of the darkness, and it's only a little bit covered in groove vomit. And Skynet beats Dota 2's best. And I, for one, welcome our brand new robot overlords. Someone suggested Valve open up some of the sauce. They don't seem too opposed to the idea. And the XVK rolls back that 1.1. Not to worry, they also brought some new improvements in the meantime. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Vin here at LGC Axel, switching the bits, producing this nightmare fuel, joined every week with Jordan's Fig, um, a very empty looking shelf, and the man from Britannia who loves his keyboards, that is Pedro Mateus, together with you Hello. in Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cogate Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Everyone knows about my business. Jordan, what are you up to, baby? I'm trying to coordinate shit between buildings. So I can get everything moved from this building to the new building. Gotta order internet. I'm I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to that 1.5 gigajoule fiber. I I, uh, I kind of want you to take the shelf with you, man. It's kind of like a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I I I I picked I picked out a nice like shelving solution from IKEA. I'm gonna go with that one because then mm-hmm. I can it. It, it it is broader than it is tall, so I can mm. hopefully cram more books onto it. Right on, right on. Pedro, how's Britannia? Uh, uh, still in the EU, uh, for some reason. <laughs> I, I, I heard it got up to 10 and people were barbecuing. <laughs> yeah, no, it was actually uh, pretty warm uh, yesterday afternoon, and today was actually really, really sunny. That was uh, that was a nice change, but yeah, no, I spent most of the day indoors uh, figuring out all the hoops that I need to jump through to report a bug with the Clear Linux because they have a bug with the localization in certain specific locales that have certain specific keyboard layouts, like Portuguese. Yeah, so I I, I did that today. Hmm. <laughs> I put together a Threadripper box, and we're using it right now. So if we disappear from the internet, it's because I did something incorrectly. Um, it's because you, you ripped all the threads, man. Dude, it's ripping. It's booping threads like nobody's business. It's crazy. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know who's also a little ripped is, 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 is the horse. That's kind of fucked up, man. I don't even get to talk I, about anything. Jordan's like, nah, man, skip your bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you're talking about building Threadrippers. I don't, I don't fucking know. It's the steam. No, now he just jumps into it before I get a chance to be over here. <laughs> yeah. Do, do it. it. Linux. Update. Update. Don't Don't the and in true uh, Valve Honor tradition, they are rolling up the betas. Well, that's not really their thing. It's just a thing with software in general. Uh, you just roll up all the betas and then you release it to production. And well, now everyone can have all the new bits that came out uh, over the past month or so. Uh, if you're running the stable client, you get everything. So that's nice. For Linux, that means they fixed most of the zero byte downloads. There's still a few of those kicking around. Um, they fix the Proton and Steam Play configurations not being correctly applied. Um, and they enable the uh, Steam Play thing in uh, big picture mode. So yeah, basically everything that if you're running the betas up to now, you've been enjoying, now everyone else gets to play with them too. And that's fine. <laughs> One of the things I want to touch on uh, 100%, have you guys noticed, um, I don't know if you're using IPv6, but probably for the last three or four updates, even though they, I think they addressed it like two weeks ago, we know this is an issue. I've been downloading it. Though. Oh, I know. First world problems here. The speed <laughs> of smell. I've been living that 20 megabyte a second lifestyle. Like, oh, yeah, we, 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 we haven't invented IPv6 up in Canada. We're no. still on IPv4. Yeah, I'm using IPv6 right now and I get like 27 megabytes per second download. That, I <laughs> do. No. <laughs> yeah. That's about as fast as my internet goes, man. <laughs> I, I, I will say that. I think, that, I think uh, did, did they add some of the fossil functionality into the Steam beta client a couple weeks ago? Because I don't remember seeing the cache dumping stuff. I don't know. 
Uh, they did the Vulcan thing like two weeks ago. The Vulcan thing. It's yeah, the, Vulcan the enabled Vul- uh, Vulcan pipeline dumping and collection if pre-shader caching is enabled. All right. Mm. Yeah, no, because that, because that, that's what their their fossilized API does. So yeah, I, I, no, I, that, I that was two weeks what, ago, I think. Was yeah. it? I mm-hmm. I honestly don't remember. I see. I'm one of the people who don't follow the beta because it breaks too often on Thursdays before <laughs> no. I go live. No, it so. doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. No, it fucking it doesn't. Does. It broke a hole of twice for me <laughs> in, you know, since 2013. <laughs> listen, Pedro, it, Jordan, Jordan has enough problems <laughs> on Thursdays. I, listen, I, 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 have, I have many problems, and Steam cr- beta crashing is, or not working properly, is generally one of them. Uh, but yeah. so now Bird, Steam. Steam EMU is now open source. Uh, this was posted on our Linux underscore gaming for those who would like to be able to play their games in 20 years time or those with uh, patchy internet connections this simulator <laughs> is an excellent piece of software that supports both windows and linux so we are talking about the steam emulation that emulates the steam because emulation is emulation online features let you play games that use steam multiplayer apis on lan without steam or an internet connection i thought this was neat and this is good news for those yep. worried about Steam, you know, going out of business tomorrow because of the Epic Store, right? No, well, uh-huh. if uh, if Herr Geldrick <laughs> is to be believed, we actually talked about this. Uh, this was a Reddit thread a while ago. Some the guy was actually posting requests to see if people were interested in contributing. So now they finally put it up on GitLab, uh, and they're very they're very very clear. This is not a piracy tool. You this will mm-hmm. not bypass any sort of DRM. This is just something that implements the Steam API features, so that if Steam doesn't exist, the client can still function in some capacity, and you can play your games. Well, you don't need the client. You can still get the games to see. Oh, there's a client running, despite there not being one. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, that that, that kind of stuff's mm-hmm. important. Right. Or yeah. That, that, and, that, that's that's what I say as Jill Bryant, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, um like the post on Reddit, like the very first comment is like, yes, this does not break a DRM. So it's uh it does its best to not actually crack the games. Uh, although you can just very easily do that nowadays. There's a couple of uh, Google clicks that you go through and you figure out exactly how to do it. But I'm pretty sure Valve is not going to be too happy with the slippery slope that something like this may create. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know because they've, they've been they've been fairly receptive to open source projects, and they they might be they it's it's within their it's within the realm of possibility that they might call this guy up and be like, hey man. Uh, you might want a little bit of help with this because I don't, I don't, I don't know some something about uh, spotty internet connections, spe- mm-hmm. especially in places like Tanzania. Well, you got to that- think about it, man. I mean, if you're trying to have a land party on your submarine, you're not going to have. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Right. I mean, I mean, it's 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 very common. I, I love renting submarines and going underwater and playing Counter Strike Source uh, or, Do- or or Dota. Yeah, I was now, about now- to say, tell me about these Dota two bots, man. <laughs> oh man, the, the 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 robots are coming to take over our our video games. Um, yeah. So op- OpenAI was a project, uh, or had a project that was uh, trying to make a AI that will play Dota two, and it seems like they succeeded. Um, they were playing against uh, some of the better uh, ranked Dota two players, and uh, they the the bots won. Uh, there were there were a couple uh, restrictions and handicaps though. Number one, uh, the AI players could not pick. Uh, anything that like did minion management because the thought was that the um, machine learning algorithm can uh, delegate units faster than a human can, so that would be unfair. So mostly it's like the hacky slashy, just raw fighty types. And what what's also interesting is that uh, none of the none of these uh, none of the players were actually connected. They were just assuming that everyone was following the same strategy, um, and it seemed to work relatively well. Um, they were able to uh, beat most of the uh, most uh, most of the uh, other players. Uh, there there were a couple exceptions though. Uh, stealth based characters and some of the weirder spellcasty types thwarted the bots AIs because they're not. Uh, it doesn't really fall into the existing play pattern they were trained to handle, and so they just can't adapt. Uh, but it's it's still it's still very interesting. Um, you'll be able to play against them uh, yourself for a little while. They're going to be opening it up uh, for people to apply, so you can test your might against our new robot overloads. 
if you yeah, play for Dota. three whole days uh that's how long you get to play against yeah. you know the brand new ai and yeah like like jordan mentioned the um Right now, it seems that the two strategies uh, that seem to really confuse it, because the AI was trained basically by playing against itself under those limitations. Uh, so when it comes to pulling, as in trying to keep your minions from reaching certain points at certain, uh, you know, the creeps on the AI side are already advancing towards your towers, and there are none of your creeps in the lane yeah. so what the hell's up with that so the, the ai the, goes a bit mental there and blockings like setting up actual like the spell casters that set up like blockades in the middle of lane yeah that seems to uh confuse the ai as well <laughs> yeah the, the 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 other downside too is that um they don't tend to go for last kills so in the early game you can try to take advantage of that to get a better level and gold advantage during the map all, all in all it's very interesting and it's um when, when you get stuff like alpha go which people were touting oh go is the game that computers will never be able to figure out and then alpha go <laughs> just like uses these alien weird strategies <laughs> to dominate like the top human players this, we're, we're living in interesting times definitely we definitely yeah. are it's kind of impressive to watch how this has come you know even from go to i remember getting my just ass handed to me in like battle chess way back in the dos ages <laughs> to something it is so much more complex when you think about you know resource management mob squads just dota itself it's like okay and you have people mm -hmm. that do nothing but play this game and that's what oh, it's yeah. up against and it's winning <laughs> spooky okay uh build source that's the thing yeah specifically team fortress classic and there was a bit of a bug reported on the uh, valve github about the execution order of map configs being reversed and you know they figured out eventually what it was and michaela michaela whatever the case may be um replied he works for valve well they work for valve let's go with that and uh People were saying it's like, okay, so there's a bit of an issue here because the way that the source, uh, well, the gold SRC engine worked is it did a lot of the heavy lifting locally in your PC and then just sent the necessary stuff to the server. Now, with the one of the latest updates, it changed some of that functionality so it's being hosted on the server, which frees up some resources on your end. And... That's where this all stemmed from, because when people were trying to debug exactly what happened, some suggested it's like, why don't you open sauce the code and then we can actually see what's up and everyone will be, you know, able to adjust accordingly. Wasn't one of your first and thoughts like, hey, man, how? why the hell is this not open source in the first spot? I mean, because it's a game engine. <laughs> I, I, you, I mean that yeah, would be like, like the lead thing something that's old is dirt and memorial and like valve come on right, really right and and you know there, there there may be some licensing stuff that's still in effect but i, I could see valve working around that yeah and, <laughs> and it, it might result in some cool hacks like um i, I don't know og half-life on vulcan that would be kind of cool oh that, uh, that'll yeah. be a thing and like reading the reply this kind of came across as like oh yeah well i guess we could do that yeah, no, and he took it up to uh, Alfred, who also works at Valve, is, and apparently they're Mother not fucking too... Alfred, man. You know it's you know, you know it's gonna be <laughs> yeah, a real thing now. <laughs> apparently they're Batman not first. too opposed right. to the idea, but it will require some work, probably some licensing stuff. I mean, it's the engine that drove Half Life, right? <laughs> oh, oh yeah no if, if if you ever like listen to one of uh, red hat red hat's talks about like how they've taken like a paid product and then open source it there's like a long lengthy process of like lawyers like crawling through code to like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no the, the, this is someone else's this is someone else's this needs to be replaced this needs to be replaced so e even if even if valve is like on board with doing this it's going to take them a while to actually audit all the code and figure out what they can and even can auditing the code like a code base that old yeah. you might not even know who you need to get in contact contact with or if you should it's like, oh I mean, 
didn't this person die? <laughs> or 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 or, or, or you even you get into like you get into like weird situations where they license some piece of software from some other company that just doesn't exist anymore. Right. Yep. You don't know if anybody owns the rights or yeah. Anything. Yeah, it could be dodgy. Uh, yeah. Proton, we got a little bit of news here with four point two dash three. The big thing you want to take from this is not that Naturo Shippuden, the what the hell ninja turbo Na- Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Four. <laughs> you can experience the plot of Naruto no. Shippuden no. and be a be a badass no, ninja. No, no jutsu. No. Uh, they added the mono bits, which this is kind of cool because this is one of the big things that you had to deal with if you were trying to get a lot of Unreal Engine three type games up and running. Uh, I was tempted to test it with a um, goddamn Batman, like the original Arkham Asylum. That took way too much bullshittery to get that working with Proton. But I did check a uh, horrific acid trip, a.k.a. Killer is Dead, mixed with the working now. And I'm going to probably put some time into that game because 30 minutes in, I was like, what the fuck? But Pedro was like, <laughs> nah, man. Suda 5-1. That, 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 that's, yeah. That's two to five one. <laughs> yeah, the, the, from, from, from the minds that brought you Killer Seven and other games. Yes, yeah. no, and, and if, no more heroes. Uh, yeah, w- one of the things that uh, came out at around the same time was a little tweet by uh, Ethan Flibbertigibabo, and um, he is saying basically, if you have an XNA game now, Proton will be able to handle most of the heavy lifting, just completely translating that XNA directly to a game that people can play um but if you still have the uh the sauce code make sure you actually go in and use uh xna to fna to like get uh the game working on current systems without needing much of anything else because right now if you don't the game will basically, in broad strokes uh be running directly through proton proton just looks at it oh that's mono. I know that. Gimme. And there are still a few issues. It, it, it tries. <laughs> yeah. well, for XNA games, not, you know, the mo- more complex ones. Yeah, those still take some doing. But there are still some issues with Windows Media files specifically, like uh, WMV videos and games. That was yeah. one of the examples he brought up specifically. But these are minimal issues when you consider that the brunt of the engine work from an XNA game is now going through Proton directly. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I know, I know, Flip. It was talking about like the dream of like the the sub minute uh, XNA to FNA port. This might be the zero second XNA or FNA port. <laughs> yeah. Well, at, at least at least I guarantee you, a bunch of XNA devs believe that to be the case. Also. <laughs> Also, we got to be really careful about spoilers because we don't want to spoil the rest of this podcast. But there was a bit of a rollback to uh, one kind of critical component to Proton that we will discuss more in depth in the news segment. Um, yeah, but it's good to see that it's still rolling on. We're getting more and more updates. More and more games are just working under Linux, so yeah. you can <laughs> so you you can you can finally find another game to say once it comes to Linux. I'll ditch Windows. Coming up next. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about what our, what games we're gonna finally ditch uh, Windows for once they come to Linux. <laughs> Linux. Right? Well, it's about time we get into some news, but before we do that, more we adult, do need to take more some responsible. time. Try it again. Okay. Uh well Penis. it's Okay, never mind that then. Jordan, why don't you tell the lovely people how they can support this sausage fest? Penis! <laughs> now you can, you, can, you, can, you can head on over to flixgamecast.com, click that support button, and look, look, look at all those penises in, in that array there. We got, we, got, uh, we got Amazon affiliate links, Humble Partner links, stuff that you can click on, buy stuff for you. And then support Ooh. us. It's 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 the easiest way to do it, uh, spe- especially if you're buying stuff for your company over Amazon. You should totally just you know use your business account, and click that affiliate link. It's be good. Uh, you can also uh, head on over to our Patreon page, where 120 of one of you are giving us 288 bucks a week to produce this nonsense. You get to watch cool stuff like Ven attempting to assemble a Threadripper and. Uh, access to our discord channel where you can chat with a bunch of these other monstrosities who occasionally say something interesting or pithy 
Um, lots of lots lots of really cool um, stuff just behind the Patreon wall. Uh, the you get the pre pre super chosen or the yeah the pre pre super chosen pre pre super chosen man. So it's it's so much pre. It's kind of uh, brilliant. One of the things I want to throw in, uh, you lot helped us put together this red ripping system to bring you more awesome shit in the future. So I made a video for patrons with a detailed parts list of everything that we did and a short and sweet three, four minute video. If you have any questions about anything, uh, hit me up on that thread and go check out the video. Uh, it's me doing it. So it's just to the point what's in it, how it works. And uh, thank you for that yeah the and you know the some of some of the parts that went into that thread ripper box came from our amazon wish list which oh, you can shit. buy us stuff from and like like underwear we desperately need new underwear All the underwear and, and just other stuff that we can use <laughs> for the show some uh behringer uh interfaces uh, USB cables, all sorts of random crap that we need to get this thing going. You give us, if you send us some stuff, you can send us a little letter. We'll read it on the stream, and you also go on uh, Frank's little fuck wall over there. I, I think we got space for one more name, one more name before <laughs> we gotta retire the fuck wall 2.0. 2.0 is gone, baby. Oh, 2.0 yeah. is gone. Well, we got yeah. one more space, but after that, man, then, then you'd be yep. like, ah, oh, man, you'll be like second. You you'll be fucking the Voyager of the fuck wall. <laughs> <laughs> watch watch kate mulgrew just like fucking throw us a 2080 be like yeah put my name up there we are, this is the voyager um janeway drop an elbow man yeah and maybe maybe kate mulgrew could be tempted to buying a linux gamecast mug i don't i don't know do, do we still have mugs again the thing it is the teespring yeah. on fuck our mugs <laughs> yeah no apparently they sort of that out <laughs> yeah store at linksgamecast.com buy some stuff lgc apparel you can tell your friends that you're a francophile or pretend that you're a mayonnaise enthusiast and confuse <laughs> children when you're walking down the street in the park at school at the mcdonald's play place what you're doing there as a 30 year old adult trying to go down a kid's slide i don't know but more power to you where hell i'll shirk while you're doing it seems like a thing uh, yeah let's let's get into the let's get into the new segments Got to roll. Indeed. We got to roll things back. So, uh, not so much on the driver news this week, but we do have some DXVK news, and uh, they did have a version one point one out for a little bit, <laughs> and they minute, actually specifically they? say it's like. The release was taken back because it was causing uh, game crashes and GPU hangs for some users. If you have a built environment set up, please test a new master branch. Uh, so they rolled that back, but they do they did introduce some new fixes with version 1.0.3. So um, I didn't notice yeah. that they s specifically uh, pointed out that Dark Souls Remastered and Grim Dawn, they added a workaround to fix rendering issues on the NVIDIA GPUs. It's like, Dark Souls Remastered, wasn't that working already with Proton? So I had a look, it's like, oh, it's the one game that's sitting at silver of the uh, Dark Souls series that's available on Steam. It's, oh, it's the one that's sitting at silver while all the other ones are at gold. Huh. There, there, there was another interesting bug they fixed too. Uh, apparently, there was an issue where the state cache uh, didn't actually mm -hmm. enforce its own size, so it could theoretically grow to consume all of your disk space if <laughs> left unchecked. So that uh, that's a very unlikely situation, but you know, maybe, maybe you like to fill up your SSDs. I know I do. Um, so that's the thing. Yeah, regressions are a thing that happen. Um, the XDK is actually a really fast moving project, and. Considering how complex it actually is, I'm surprised more issues haven't slipped through like that. So it's good that they caught it. They rolled it back. Maybe maybe we'll see uh, the actual 1.1, or maybe they'll just bump it to 1.2 mm -hmm. uh, in the coming weeks. But yeah, def if, you, if you can build it and test it out, definitely give Master a build because they want to get those issues squashed so we can get back to playing Windows games under Linux like a bunch of dirty fucking heathens. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, Proton ruined me. It's like, oh, look at all those one thousand games that you have in your library. No, you can try them all. Play more than three. <laughs> you're, you're ruined the Windows. Oh, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta smash that Proton button, fam. Every now and then. <laughs> so, one thing that'll prevent you from smashing that Proton button is the Unity 3D game engine for video games. Sometimes under Linux. And they got a little bit of news in their blog about the preview of the Linux editor Unity. 
editor for Linux is now in Prevo. You can get the latest builds from the Unity Hub. It's thing, a uh, fully supported version by the end of the year, prioritizing support for the following list, uh, CentOS 7, 1604, and 1804 of the Humbuntu's, x86-64, GNOME desktop environment, because you hate yourself. Really? NVIDIA, really? proprietary <laughs> graphics drivers, and AMD Mesa. So graphics, pretty cool to see, because... Unlike, oh, I don't know, Epic, um, <laughs> Unity does seem to care at least a little bit about Linux. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm guessing having an editor working on Linux has been one of the things that people have been shouting at them for long enough that they have to do something about it. That's fair. Well, <laughs> when I, and like Gano got around this very cleverly by like actually implementing their editor in their engine. So as long mm -hmm. as their engine supports the platform, their editor does as well. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the targets here may cause a bit of herm and, and hurring, but here's the thing. CentOS seven is new enough that it'll, anything that's targeting that will run on a modern fedora install. And 1604 is going to be the new 1204. It's just not going to die. Same with 1804. <laughs> um, and, and so at least, at least targeting that means that your games will probably things built on that will be in a similar running state than they would on like steam OS or something like that. Picking picking gnome there. Listen, there was not a good option there for them at all. If they if they picked KDE, people would lose their goddamn minds. If they mm -hmm. picked XFCE, <laughs> people would lose their goddamn minds. Gnome is kind of the the lowest common denominator. Um, it ships I with Ubuntu by said, default. See, I would have just said it's like okay, target GTK, not gnome specifically. Well, so the the the, the other thing too is you're not getting. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're not getting you're not getting any love uh, if you're going to if you're going to be running trying to run this in Wayland because Unity really doesn't like SDL two for some reason. But that, yeah. that is what it is. Um, yeah, <laughs> they ran into in, in, a wall, Jordan. They ran into a wall. <laughs> they, you know, they ran into the sunk cost fallacy when they started writing raw X code into their freaking engine instead of using the thing that abstracts all of that away. It supports all the other things too. No, but, you know, Jordan, that, that's, Jordan, that's, that's, they, that's they, they can do talk. it better for. Like, Attempting to do that for two years ago. Fine. Jeez, we'll do it correctly. <laughs> I spy with my little eye. Not in house syndrome. Um, <laughs> hey, let's try to pronounce this. Athenium? Athenium? Maybe? Athenium. Athenium. It's a Libre replacement for Steam. And the news about this, you probably already know about this piece of kit, is it's now available on FlatHub. So, no more of that pesky pseudo apt install Athenium. Uh, but, what is it? You never heard of it. It is basically Steam for open source games, correct? Is that the right way to say for this? Lu 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 Lutris, Lutris for yes. flat packs. <laughs> yeah. Lutris for flat packs. And that is, speaking of flat packs, not only is this available as a flat pack, they do make a point to point out the best way to get your game on Ethereum is to create a flat pack config and submit it to the flat hub github repository what works yep. currently installing games running games uninstalling games that's a nice feature and updates only monolithic at the moment individual is to come and you know i mentioned this earlier in discord this week and of course uh matthew from lutris was like "Ooh, i'm gonna go straight or some of that <laughs> Ooh, yeah. shiny UI. I'm going to improve on I, Lutris. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do like the justification, though. It's like, well, we're, 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 a game, we're a product about shipping flat packs to people, so we might as well just ship it in a flat pack. Because I heard you like flat packs, so I put some you flat don't. pack in your flat pack. Flat um, it. Flat, flat <laughs> that That's a show title. Thanks <laughs> just that. Flat zip it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that, that that's available uh, if Lutris is a little too complicated to get set up, because I know it's very hard to clone a Git and run a Python script. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a thing. It, how was this not a flat pack to start with? I mean, they're basically Steam or Lutris for flat packs. So why not be a flat... Listen, Pedro, first of all, you're just in the pocket of big flat pack. Snaps of the future. <laughs> I'll take flat packs over snaps any day. Isn't, isn't, isn't big flat pack just red hat? 
Shut <laughs> I up. guess I'm now. <laughs> Shut up and talk about Zork. All right, game. Zork. Listen, it's very dark. You might get eaten by a Gru. So this this is always cool for like game preservation stuff. Uh, they they sometimes people will dig out uh, old tapes that will have old source code on them. Uh, this happened for Adventure a couple years ago, like the OG text adventure game. Uh, that it was actually written in like NCC from like nineteen or in, like the nineteen eighty one dialect. So they were able to get it up and running. Zork, however, is written in something called uh, Z-I-L. Zil? I don't know. I don't know. Yes. Um, it's, so um, they, they, f- they, found a, they found a tape with uh, a, a copy of the source code that supposedly comes from Infocom. There's no real way to confirm or deny it because if you decompile Zork, you're not going to get the same code. Um, but uh, they, they found, they found uh, it. Uh, the Facebook uh, Z-I-L group has ported it to a modern version of it uh and you can now you can play it um i was actually kind of curious like how many people can actually still read or write this language they're probably old or like very Dead. close to dying at the moment <laughs> yeah um, you can find them all in a very uh, aptly named facebook group <laughs> yeah the, the, there's like a graveyard you can go to that's where they bury all the zil programmers um also so while the source is available um archive.org is hosting at the moment this isn't actually open source the licenses still apply um they just found a copy of it and gave it to the archive.org folks because right you know, that's that's their job they archive stuff um so don't start expecting the open source zork revolution um or let less uh, the corpse of the the necromantic corpse of Inc- infocom will send their zombie crews after you to no man that'd be brilliant man. we need to get it on steam and we need vulcan support vulcan text yes. adventure yes. I'm, I'm into it yeah <laughs> i'm not about call that. it I sock it. <laughs> call it zock and release it as an open source clone it, 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 it's zork <laughs> but it's with an x instead of a z call it lezork just put le at the beginning of every sentence <laughs> yeah just, uh, just falsely attribute Zork. everything to Matthew Commandant. There, See what we happens. there we go. That's out. That's the thing. We got a point release to talk about, though. Yeah, Super Tux Cart. We oh, threw chairs yes. at it once, and now apparently we're going to have to do it it's again. Back. Actually, yeah, we threw it twice, twice already. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the, 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 I don't think we did it twice. I think we did it once. Um, but anyways... Um, you, If you've been following the development, we've been playing a little bit of the Super Tux Cart online stuff, and people have been asking, you know... This is kind of the feature that people have been asking for. Isn't it a good idea to just slap a 1.0 on it? And the Super Tux guys, thought, Super Tux Cart guys thought about it for a second. They're like, actually, yeah, let's just slap a 1.0 on it. So there you go. Um, you can now download su- the official 1.0 release of Super Tux Cart containing the one update that everyone actually fucking, oh God, oh God, I'm getting ro- Super Tux Cars flashbacks. Ice back. <laughs> yeah, no. That that's some that's some spiky bullshit right there. Um you can play it, it's available. Um you were able to compile it and try it out for the longest time, but now it should be pushed out to your distribution's particular source repositories. You might have be able be even able to download it through Ethernum, because there's a flat pack. Um yeah, so I, I think we're gonna be throwing chairs at it next week, I guess, if it, nothing it, else it, comes it's in. Definitely in the plans, man. But yeah, I'm twenty thousand lines of network code later that that was like a bigger undertaking than like moving over everything over to PLIB. So that the only thing I would say is um great project. Talk about a project I would love to see on Steam. Like not joking. This yeah, they, would be they great. were on Greenlight, weren't they? I don't know what when Greenlight was a man. thing. They're like yeah. wizards. <laughs> However, I I beg to you, get the hell off SourceForge. All right. It's sketchy. I, I, it's like the nineties are back to go download it. I downloaded this and fake fucking download buttons, man. Really in 2019. Well, they they Mm -hmm. were also doing that shit too, where like they were adding ads to like random installers and Mm -hmm. yeah, they would introduce like the ad thing. Yep. Yeah, ask I mean, you for your root password, and you're like, oh, okay. yeah. G- GitHub <laughs> exists. GitLab <laughs> exists. I mean, the shit they're already host. They're already hosted on GitHub, anyways. So, right. I mean, just move the binaries there. I don't know. I mean, to be anyways, fair, SourceForge isn't as sketchy right now as it was for a year, a couple of years ago. Yeah, this is yeah, true. but it's still bad. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up next, we're gonna sit here and power up for about thirty minutes while the planet Namek explodes. Welcome to the chair position, where the accused game must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and Ubuntu. And then, can the question be asked? 
was fun. This week we're taking a look at Baba Is You, developed by Hempli Oi on the Multimedia <laughs> Fusion 2 engine. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks. What is it? Baba Is You is a puzzle game where the rules you have to follow are presented as blocks you can interact with by manipulating them. You can change how the game works, repurpose things you find level, and cause surprising interactions. Uh, the Sildat bought us keys for this game, so thank you, Sildat, mm -hmm. for making us play this game. Let's get into it. How did how to run on Ubuntu? I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it brought the Threadripper to its knees, baby. It, it it was definitely like one of the most taxing things I've done recently with it. When like the three days or two days I've had it together on the fresh 1904, not an LTS, but it is an 04. Thread ripping, uh, thread thread boober. That's what I'm calling it, man. It's the thread boober. 1920x, 32 gigajoules of RAM. 2060 uh no issues ran out of the box is happy to see that very pleased to see that uh and maintain somehow managed to maintain a solid 60 at uh whatever resolution it runs at and graphics mind melting pixels and controls when i saw it was kind of a custom joint with the engine i was like oh hell nope excluding controller worked out of the box happy to report clean bill of health for solid jazz yeah, on uh, Fedora 28, 64-bit with the S7, 6700K, GTX 1080Ti, 32 gigs of RAM, bunch of NVMe drives. Yeah, it, 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 it works. It's a fucking pixel game. Of course it does. Uh, performance, yes. I've, I don't even think it's uh, it's even capable of like hitting 60 frames a second. It's just running at whatever FPS it is. It's fine. It works. Um, and with that, uh, yeah, uh, gra uh, graphics... I mean, they're they're functional. It's, it's a sliding block puzzle game. It doesn't need to be that insane. And controls. Uh, I've tried out the dual Spock, the drool Spock. It worked out of the <laughs> box. Uh, or you can just use the arrow keys. That also works. Yeah, that, that, that's that's it. Yeah. Chairs. And um, over here on Solus with the sixteen hundred and the GTX ten eighty. Yeah, it launches. It performs. Yeah, it's uh, stuck at 60 no matter what the resolution, though. Look at it. That is to be expected. Um, the graphics. I guess if something wasn't working properly, it'd stick out like crazy. And really, the only options that they give you for graphics is like, do you want it in full screen or do you want it in a window? And the thing is like, I, I'm thinking it's like, okay, it doesn't let you pick a resolution that's going to be annoying, but no, you can just resize the window to whatever size you want, and it works. Um, as for controls, yeah, it's the cursor, keys, and Z is undo. That's all you need. Four chairs. Well, there you go. This game works, unless you're running Haiku, in which case... Oh, man. Why? Hard mode. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, so, so, Ben, did you have fun playing Baba Is You? You know... Check this out. 100%. Uh, you know, at first I, I was upset when I saw this. We had mentioned this game a few weeks back, and I, was, I even think I made the comment at the time that some programmer art puzzle game had the nerve, nay, the audacity to charge fourteen hundred nine. dollars I was like, really? That is, that is a little steep, Brad. Hell, I was thinking that for like probably for the first 15 minutes I was playing this game. Then I managed to solve the first puzzle. Blatant accident. By the second map, I kind of had some idea what was going on. I didn't. Uh, at that point, my strat was kind of, you know, just to make the words say, Baba is win, and I won, and I felt accomplished. Not really, because I didn't know what was going on. After that, did fuck all later on. I was lining the words up. It wasn't working. Experimentation led me to become a flag, and I get win. That was neat. That was neat and also a little scary because it's even worse when you understand the mechanics of Baba is you. Baba is wool. It's like, fuck this game. <laughs> fuck this game. Because that, that that's when it clicks that this game's smarter than you are. And uh, it's a very well-made puzzle game because, um, you know, Basically, after the third map, I, I had that basic understanding of how this game was mocking my intelligence, but I, I still managed to, like, soldier my way through and finish the first overworld. The big brains on Vin even managed to sort the first two puzzles of the second overworld. Then the game reminded me I was an absolute dipshit. I mean, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, hard. That, yeah, that, that, that first puzzle on that second world is not... That's rough, Brad. I mean, that's 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 a difficulty plot. That's a difficulty it, it, wall. It, it handed me a map. I poked at for a few minutes. Stopped. I bowed to Baba. I admitted defeat. This, ladies and gentlemen, 
is a coveted, an extremely rare desert island game for me, which means if you're stuck on a desert island with just a laptop and you got a terabyte of space, no internet connection, this is one of the fucking games you want to bring with you because I'm going to give it a solid four fuck mothering chairs. Oh yeah, th this game hurts my Brian, and that that that's good. Th this thing, this game does everything that a good puzzle game needs to do, and that's mostly make you feel like a fucking idiot. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I, I, I had a blast playing it. Uh, I I accidentally sunk about two hours into it. I looked up, I'm like, oh, oh, it's nap time already. Damn. Um, yeah. Um, it. it <laughs> So the, the the rules are very are very simple. It's a combination between like a Tetris style like or that bus game block movement, and a word word based logic puzzles. And it's it's simple enough. The grammar can sometimes take a little bit to get used to because certain like you can use the same words in the same string, but the order matters. And when, once once you, once you fit once you figure that out, then you can. Um, then you then you more or less have the game set. Although it doesn't it doesn't make it easy at times, especially once it gets into like the 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 strict typing stuff. That it's 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 rough. Um, there I will say though there does seem to be a bit of a like a sine wave in terms of puzzle difficulty because like you'll get really really fuck you hard ones, and then the next two will be like really easy, and that's that's intentional. That's to, like lull you into a false sense secure, of security, and they're like, oh yeah, here's this new thing, this monkey wrench. And you're like shit. What the fuck do I do now? The the float sync mechanics did that to me. I'm like, oh, 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 I gotta I gotta read all the things around because otherwise I'm gonna fuck myself. And and then there are those moments where you do everything right and then you realize, oh wait, these blocks. I pushed one block to the wall and I need it to move and I can't do that anymore. So I gotta fucking restart. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 this kind of stuff. It gets your it gets your brain uh, working over time. You will like put down the game, walk away, and you'll be like, okay. You'll go over it in your mind over and over and over again. You'll come back and then you'll solve it. Yeah, I, I just really like this game. This is a very well done puzzle game. This is like Steven Sauce's role quality, except it's better than Steven Sauce's role in the sense that like it give, it throws you a couple pity fucks too, just to keep you going. Just to like, no, it's not that hard. You don't have to worry about it. No, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Four chairs. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, if if I had to point out a thing to change, it's the unexplained mechanics, uh, because um, at, on one of the levels, and I remember this one distinctly, uh, it asks, uh, well, the only way you can get through is by pushing one of the word blocks into a jellyfish that has the sink property and that makes it go away. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's just that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, it takes some learning to figure out what exactly uh, you need to do to uh, or what exactly it is possible for you to do. And in Stephen Sausage Roll, since, you know, we keep going back to that, the mechanics there were simple. You cook the sausages, you can't let them fall into water or overcook them, and you have to go back to the exact same position that you started in. Okay, that's very simple, very self-explanatory. Here, it's like the more complex uh, puzzles will actively fuck with your brain. And actually, that's pretty good. Uh, here, here, here's one be, of them. Yeah, uh, you, it can be overly specific with the way that you need to arrange the words for it to work the way you want it to. But outside of that, it's a fine example of what puzzle games should be like uh, it gives you and everyone else playing it a gun with like 10 different kinds of ammunition and it just sits back and watches you disintegrate your feet worse than the uh, steam horse so yeah no it, it it gets four chairs it's it's good it's a yeah. very good puzzle game <laughs> yeah I and, didn't know whether or not I, I, if you're looking at something if you're watching the video I and mean, this looks like something on a ZX Spectrum from back in the day. I mean, it's very simple. And it goes to show just how much game mechanic itself can play over graphics. And I think unlike Steven Sausage Roll, something you brought up, Jordan, is this game gives you false hope where uh, <laughs> the sausage just 
It fucks you. It does. It, it, it oh, doesn't yeah. even give you that. It's like, no, I, you're not going to figure this out. Keep trying, but you're not. Yeah. This is like, uh, it'll throw you a bone when it's... And I think it does that to introduce the mechanics. It's like, okay, <clears throat> let's lower the difficulty just a little bit, but only enough to where you learn to use this thing to realize that it's about to get even more fucky. Oh, yeah. Those, Steven's option to roll also does the thing that the bridge does where it gives you like a very obvious solution and it's like no motherfucker mm -hmm. that was the wrong one why did you think <laughs> it would even be that simple fuck you um, <laughs> this, this game is a lot gentler but it's also a lot more fucky because there's so many more components and like ways things interact um, yeah Brilliant. I, 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 I really like this game and, and, to, and, to, and to your point yeah like um Gra graf graphics aren't ever anything or aren't everything and a lot of people are like quick to to brush off hipster pixel games but like some sometimes I, th I think like prettier graphics would distract from the gameplay here it is this is very much like minimalist to the point of understanding what you need to do and you could have done it. this with ascii you re yeah you oh, yeah. genuinely could yeah <laughs> And it's right. it's amazing how much you can accomplish with very little, and we've seen that time and time again. Steven Sausage Roll, very simple concept, very simple graphics, genius freaking puzzles. This is just more of that, but slightly different, and you have to be careful with the wording. So, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Pretty good. All right. Coming up next, man, it's a very Jordan focused hate mail segment. Lots of people want relationship <laughs> advice. And so I will fix it like the tool I am. And I think that about wraps it up. That was actually a surprisingly good game. If you didn't watch the review because you skipped it because, I don't know, you're a skippy muck skippy pants, uh, you can uh, let us know why you keep skipping the uh, the chairs by going over to linuxgamecast.com, hitting the contact button, and uh, make sure LGC Weekly is the show that you're sending your message to, and then let us know bit by bit why you hate our um, chair acquisition. I think Sounds I'll skip good? it, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well you can do that too but hey since this is a jordan episode you don't get to read any of the things so um frenchie says jordan why is it harder to get a girlfriend than a job at disney giggity um <laughs> be, 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 because because here, 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 here here's the sad truth about working for a giant corporation is that you're effectively prostituting yourself out so it's the same question like why 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 you're, you're, you're asking Disney, why is buying a prostitute cheaper than getting a girlfriend? Um, it's, it's the same sort of thing. You are, you are the prostitute, Strider. You're, you're. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do the Mickey Mouse from South Park. I mean, I'm not going to let Eisner hurt this company again. <laughs> crack. <laughs> Don't fuck with the mouse. <laughs> okay. All right. Linda writes in, Dear Jordan. I'm considering breaking up with my LTS girlfriend. It's a rough decision because she's so dependable. Never makes me wonder what she's doing. She's never broken down. She's even got a great beaver. But unfortunately, I feel like she's not ready to start the more exciting stuff I want to do. I want to play cards. She says she needs more time to update her drivers. I say that everyone else is driving six months. I thought it said six months behind <laughs> ahead. She just says safety first. Oh, the safe word has been lost to time. I'm being unreasonable, question mark. Or should I go ahead and proposition my, wait, and proposition my that totally hot new dingo for a better ride? Sincerely, Vindicta Risen Rig. So I was going to make a bleeding edge joke, but then I thought better of it. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, you know what? So sometimes, sometimes when 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 you're when when you're with the computer for so long, you 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 you, you realize that you know it it can't do the things you want it to. It's and th this relationship just is not working. You're putting more effort into it than it's putting out. And yeah, I think I think I think it's time that you should uh, you should upgrade to something non Ubuntu based. Like, mm. we can like that. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Go. 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 Upgrade. Uh, Ven, Ven's running 1904, and nothing's exploded so far. 
I want to say, sort of, kind of. We're, we're, nothing that uh, nothing that I don't think was Ubuntu's <laughs> fault, anyways. Yo, there, there's no telling. Uh, there's something to be said for sticking with NLTS, but if you're mainly using it for like, games and desktop or anything like that, here's the true true. Is I didn't expect the NV, NVMe drive when I popped it into the Threadripper to do it. I was like, ah, curiosity, to maybe we'll get lucky. I had to do a, you know, I had to get into a safety console, nuke some drives, but it came up. I put 1904 on it yesterday as like, maybe this will hose it. <laughs> and I was just <laughs> going to go back to an LTS, but different use case. You know, this is mainly for production, for doing the shows. And it's not necessarily, you know, I, I can hear Mathieu Commandon. He's like, but it's not more stable. It's a known quantity that's not going to fuck you over in an update. It's what it is. So, I mean, it, it's going to get long in the tooth. Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with upgrading 1904 works it's just going to be you know neo dodge bullet for you know 1910 and then 2004 when that rolls around and i'm going to plant a flag in that critter for a hot I mean, I mean, like, minute I, so I, I keep i keep this box here on like a year-long release cycle because fedora gives you year-long updates mm -hmm. um so and Honestly, I given given how smooth the past couple updates from like Fedora versions have gone, I could probably get away with just like upgrading every new release, but it's just kind of a pain in the butt sometimes and I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. why that's why that's that's why I keep this guy one one uh, distro behind. But like honestly honestly like by the time Fedora 30 comes out, I'm going to be moved into the new place. I'm just going to upgrade that. Just cuz I I like I like having new stuff. Um and you know what Str strider does have a point when he was he was tweeting about this uh a couple weeks ago or a couple days ago where like a, a, a lot a lot, of, a lot of like the the fragmentation in linux happens not be not necessarily because um everyone's shipping different software it's just because there are so many like old versions of software still in the wild especially especially mm -hmm. like core libraries that stuff just doesn't work so it it you should boot, it should occur to you to upgrade periodically. Pick a schedule. It doesn't have to be every single release, but keep your stuff reasonably up to date. And but, but also you got to remember, I was talking about rolling out like another LTS, going back to 1804 and third room. He's like, oh, well, good luck with, you know, it fucking doesn't matter to me. I can build shit from source. It doesn't bother. I'll put in what I need to and I'm going to do it correctly. But he's like, oh, you'll just have to put all these PPAs in there and it'll jank up your system. And I was like, Strider, how, how do you install uh, Lutris again? <laughs> it's I not mean, a PPA I mean, to be fair. It's an uh, OBS repo. <laughs> I mean, I don't. No, I don't he's even got do a that. PPA I, now, sweetheart. Oh, he's got a PPA yeah. now too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't use the OBS repo. I'm. I'm actually with him. I don't like adding a bunch of third-party repos to my system. Um, oh no, all I, I don't either. I mean, I am 100 percent behind that. And yeah. keep that to it. I will minimum. be the lone descending voice then, because I would say if you want to keep the LTS, there's two PPAs you need to keep in mind, or one PPA uh, at least that is the graphics uh, drivers for that whichever card you have. That should be fucking default canonical. It, re yeah. it really should. That 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 is one hundred percent an Ubuntu problem. They need to that, step up yeah. the drive. Like the, like the the one thing I really appreciate appreciate about Fedora appreciate. is that appreciate. Like I'm I'm gonna appreciate all over this place. Um, <laughs> is that like they they actually do keep the base set like relatively up to date, and the only reason they'll hold it back is if it like actually breaks something. Mm. Uh, yeah, but for but for the most part, like you're getting recent versions of Mesa. So if you're on open, but yeah, on if AMD you have Intel, AMD, just make sure you use the Padaka <laughs> stable PPA. If and you have AMD, just keep you the have kernel a whole up host to date. of other problems than LTS. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the kernel and Mesa. Those are the two things that you kind of need to keep up to date if you're gaming on AMD. If you're on Nvidia, you can literally use Saint to play games. What type of updates do they use on going clear Linux? Uh, they use whatever Intel has. It, it doesn't even have a package manager, so to speak. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Church. I, I, I mean, it, it has first class support for e meters, though. If you want to like track your body thetan levels, you can just plug it right into Go and Clear Linux. <laughs> it's, it's not H top; it's e meter. Thetan. All right, beautiful people. <laughs> <sighs> On that bombshell. Don't, don't sue us, David Mishkarin. <laughs> <laughs> You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where this nightmare train pulls off the tracks and into your face and into your ears. Come join us live. Say hey. Uh, maybe say a disparaging remark just about Pedro. 
And if you want to get a hold of me, at Vin Stone on Twitter, I'm there, at Vin Stone on mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me bare knuckle boxing with our Lord and Savior Zenu on Twitter at the Burning Fool or on Astodon uh, at Astodon. Astodon, oh. Ast- Astodon, man. That Astodon. Astodon. Oh, is that the open source dating app? I need to get on that. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what story to say about that. Yeah, you can find me getting hit with something in the head very, very soon. Just keep an eye on that door back there. Uh, <laughs> at unaccounted for on Twitter or uh, at unaccounted for on Mastodon. I don't really go there. I keep notifications enabled, and so whenever someone says something about me, I get an email. But that's about it. <laughs> Credits. I just Credits assume no one is. gives a shit about what I have to say. <laughs> That, that that that's gotten me pretty good. That's gotten me pretty far on the internet. Yeah, no, I'm one of those narcissistic idiots that seems to care a little too much what other people think of him. So, yeah. Executive producers are Thera and Foxy, Empty Atomic, Mike G, Barbara, Drama Seven, Aldius, Hoplo, Mackie, and yeah, apparently Strider's mom hates me. <laughs> We, we need to resurrect the micro machine guy. He can read all the producers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, no, we should we should do like a like a who's line thing where we like <laughs> read out the credits and like the style of something drawn from a hat. Look at uh, all those fuck buddies. Mike G. <laughs> Mike G. 13. X. Mike just wins, dude. Mike's like, <laughs> yeah. fuck off. <laughs> Like, I'm waiting for the point where, like, Mike will just start sending us, like, fully assembled PCs. Nope. See, I wouldn't do that. Mike always attacks the heaviest shit first. Yeah. It's like, oh, you put that there. They did boom. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen. Dynafire. Bye. Blaze (laughs) it. Oh, so much for that, then. (laughs) For what? Five dudes. (laughs)